number one Iron Age booty daddy. Yeah, I say that is a very good idea. <laughs> one of the things I think uh, we're going to have to tackle in the coming years with the Iron Age is uh, production schedules mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. speeding those up because people are understandably uh, slow to produce things because, I mean, how, how else would you be? But yeah. Uh, I think yeah, it that takes time, man. Well, Especially I think anything that, creative is like, oof. yeah, longer than it's you very, expect. Very difficult, uh, and I'm you don't have to say something full-time job con- kind of thing. I'm going to say something highly controversial here, but if it gets better, I think if you're a writer and you want to crank out production and make sure that things are you know flowing really, really well, um, you could use it as a tool, not the main thing, but as a tool. You could like chat GPT, a basic manuscript, go. go in and adjust things how you need to adjust them, <laughs> then send that out to an editor. I mean, that could potentially save. I mean, if you've got a solid, if you've got a solid, you know, draft, you know, I mean, a decent draft, you could, because this is that's where technology is going. Technology is going to speed up all of these processes by leaps and bounds, and. Mm-hmm. I was thinking about that. And I'm like, what about all these guys who want to write and they want to put out four or five or six books a year? And it's just, they just don't have the time. And so, I mean, thinking about how, instead of being like afraid of AI and stuff like that, I'm like, what if it could help? And I'm like, I, I, I see, I know, I know, I know, I know. I just, I, I have I, a big I, rant I, that I'm going to go on, but I'm going to let our guest, <laughs> if, if, if uh, the quaff has anything to, uh, to share with us I, on on that, I'm not gonna on the on the chat GD, GPT thing. Yeah, about? about filling things in or you know, kind of using it to speed up production. Oh, um, yeah, like honestly, like or I'm kind like, of that's um... a grenade. I don't want to touch. <laughs> oh, okay. I already touched no, no, it. I, I'm, I'm very that's um, I guess you can say uh, libertarian on this topic, like kind of a you do you, like mm-hmm. like I know my um like if like honestly like if i see something that's useful like like in, in terms of ai for art mostly that's mostly what i'm looking at this chat gdp thing like i'm i i would say uh you know my writing is um is i haven't gotten where i it, i would do mostly comic books so i don't do heavy text so i don't need like that to speed up production so much but in terms of art like i use i i'm, I'm i've i've test i've tried it out like ai generated art just for references just to get ideas out on the page so i can be like i'm thinking of like this kind of motif with a dragon here and that and i just type it in there just to get my ideas out and then i see the image and i'm like that's an interesting and then i and then i, I use that as reference and come up with my own drawing so that's where um instead of searching hours and hours on google to find something mm-hmm. that that i just type it into an ai thing and then i just like um i've only tested that out recently and it's like it, it, it's, it's decent so i I'm like, nah, if, if it's useful, you know. It I, works yeah. for art, I think, in a way, which is somewhat controversial. Um, but I, I'm reluctant to say that it could work for fiction. Because no, uh, because it's today, an AI. Today, today yes. But yeah, I mean, even the fundamental concept of it, it's an AI that, you, that pulls from already established sources. Mm-hmm to compile information into a format. And so that's cookie cutter. And that's the the thing that everybody rails about in current media. Well, and that's why I said use it as a supplement and not use it as the main thing, right? It's still going to be a a super slow Mm -hmm. process. I mean, I was talking about this on Twitter. You can, you could technically by spending two hours a day, if you average about 1500 words a day, you could spend three months to write a full size novel, mm-hmm. but then you have the months of editing afterwards. So what if you, you what, if, what if you could get these things to write an entire novel's worth, and then you just have to go through and do like the editing and especially yeah, in, in the it, beginning now with where the technology is now, this is going to be time consuming. And obviously the technology is going to have to adapt and change. The technology will be there. And for people that says it's not going to be there, th- no. Because people didn't think that we were going to have... <clears throat> um, oh, God. Uh, Star Trek communicators in our hand in, you know, you know 2010. And, and we did. And we're able to video chat with people now. Like, people thought that that was just an outlandish idea. The technology will be there. 
And so I'm not saying use it as the one and only thing to make the stories. I'm saying you've got the idea in your head. You need the amount of words there that you can go through and then just restructure and do the editing. And so you use something to get that. Because again, it does take an, a lot of time to get these things to move that many times on a keyboard where you could potentially have the AI generate something somewhat close to maybe kind of in the ballpark now today, but in the future, closer to what you're thinking of, you go through and do the final edit. You go through, do some editing, change it, really craft your story from it. You're still using the artist. You're just trying to eliminate the time that it takes to put everything down on paper. That's really I where always, I always fall back on the standard adage. There are three things from any product that you can expect quality, quantity, and speed, and you can only have two. And I don't think that AI would create... I, I don't think that's that's a universal rule. I, I don't no, think I, that AI, AI would be I mean, able to enhance quality. It may give you speed and the ability to generate quantity, but in fiction, quality is really right. selling point. But that's, I literally just said we're not getting rid of the quality. Mm -hmm. You as yeah, the writer well, still have to go in and do it. You're just eliminating the amount of time it takes for the it fingers to It might save a month or two off, sure. But I, at the but same a, time, you're going to have people that will use that to just put out half-formed well, I mean, crap. they already do it now. Look at the <laughs> yeah, media that we have that's now. that's what I mean. <laughs> right. That's right. the point Richard, I'm making. Sorry. sorry, Richard. No, no. It, my, my point is that you could say that you have that triangle and you're not going to be able to get all three at the same time. But, okay, let's go back um, 50 years ago and you needed some high-quality parts machined. Um, that's true. Now we've invented CNC machines mm -hmm. and it's a matter of plugging something in. And while the setup is still intensive, even more intensive than the initial setup of a manually drill pressed part or something, uh, now you set it up and that machine can make uh, hundreds or thousands or tens of thousands of parts potentially. Mm -hmm. You know, so technology does allow a scalability and especially code allows scalability in ways that. I think it's difficult to imagine until it happens. I mean, even a year ago, like I think about six months ago, um, you know, we had stable diffusion, right? Now we have all these other things and people have stopped, you know, people still talk about counting fingers. And I mean, don't get me wrong. That's definitely a problem with AI art, but you know, uh, the, the arguments against AI art have changed substantially in the last six months. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. It's it's gone from it's hideous and you're an idiot if you think it's any in any way useful or good good period to it's unethical to use it because you're you know um, you're stealing jobs away from yeah people. you're stealing jobs and you're yeah. you're stealing it's almost too good. And so forth <laughs> yeah right yeah, yeah but, I, I mean, but again you can't take the human element out of this and that's the thing is I I, I see you know James Craig down in the chat and I do want to highlight this he says I think you're underestimating the craft effort that goes into scene construction, Royce. No, I'm not, because I have crafted my own scenes. Now, in songs and in a much different way, using music, I'm not underestimating that. What I'm saying is there could potentially be a tool in the toolbox to help reduce the amount of time it would take you to produce your next quality. The quality lies with you, not with the AI. The AI may just be a tool that you can use to put the, the quantity down on paper. Yeah, and like Daniel said, you might be able to eliminate a month or two, but a month or two in a year on three projects, that's six months. That is a substantial amount of time. Well, listen, and I think this this is what I want to say about kind of AI in general, which is I think that any technology comes down to the individual. OK, you can use um, a light and a piece of paper to trace somebody else's work. Mm -hmm. All right. That's that's and then call it your own. And that's unethical. Right. Right. Um, you can also do a really crappy imitation just copying somebody's work and just like one to one. OK, you know, OK, I got it. That's also that's low quality it, quality and and um, ethics mm -hmm. are entirely on the individual. You can use AI and it, just as any other technology, you can use it to make low quality knockoffs. You can make it to you can use it to try and improve quality um, or you can use it to uh, do things that are unethical. 
you know, I, I think that, um, you know, I would tend to agree with the quaff about, you know, it, a lot of it comes down to the individual oh, and how fuck. they want to use it. And I, I think that to send Mike the link again. <laughs> did, you, did you actually forget? I, I don't yeah, think. No, I genuinely forgot to send Mike the link again. <laughs> Damn it! Um, I remembered like before I rushed down here. To... <sighs> Sorry, Mike. He has an open invite to the stream, and I <laughs> tell him that every week, and then I keep forgetting. Mike, here's the link if you if you want to join. I know sometimes he's busy and he just shows up to bust my ball. I saw him down in the chat. <laughs> so for me, the thing about it is that if you stack a bunch of the AI generated art next to each other, and it's something that I am a pattern recognizer, I pay attention to minute details that repeat in everything. And I watch some of the guys that create AI cover art for their books, specifically when they do character images. And if you watch a parade of those images go by, you start to see that it's randomly altered formats. The same nose in four pictures, the same set of eyes in ten pictures, just a different chin and a different cheek or a different profile. And that's the thing that makes me leery of it in fiction writing because it's not going to grab a reader if the uh, you leave the AI in to describe a tree the exact same way. So you're no. going to go through line by line mm. and adjust everything. So you might as well just write the sentence yourself. But potentially, potentially, there is a potential for that, but maybe not. Right? I mean, it's going to be no different than checking for spelling errors now or <clears throat> punctuation and things like that. The difference is, is that you might have something that can generate, I mean, what average. But in that, you're not an author, you're an editor. You're going to have an AI editor, too. Yeah. I mean, like, I, I, I hate to break it to you. I saw that way. Herman it's... talking about we need an AI for marketing and uh, something else. I guarantee yeah. that exists already. You you know, imagine the, the future crap, AI for marketing, but also an AI for buying. So it's mm. just going to be robots marketing to it's each exactly. other. That's They'll literally reading, where we're going. And they're going to read the book for you too, so you don't have to actually do anything at all. <laughs> You've already heard the AI, the, uh, the AI like voiceover, like the AI voice generators. Like you don't even no, need I voice mean, actors anymore. No, I mean oh they're going God, to yeah, read it great. for you, so you don't have to. I mean, you can just say I read the book and you know, have you. Well, that's perfect. See, that's Wally? great. Now I can, I can finally have consumed all the media that exactly. I should in order to be a good interviewer. Exactly. And, uh, mm -hmm. Then I'll just have my little machine friends drill a hole into my skull and port directly into my brain all the knowledge that they've. Yeah, yeah that's where your that's where your Elon Musk brain will happen. Yep. Yeah, exactly. And while they're, they're at it, they'll track, all yeah, they'll track your location and everything that you do. And, you they know. already do that, by the way. Anyway, the quaff. Sorry about that. I'm I trying to wind Richard up here. Give me a sec. I, oh, okay. Uh. Thank you so much for checking out this clip from Iron Age Nights. We go live every single Friday at 8 p.m. Central. Our goal is to bring to you the storytellers who are building and creating culture, trying to get away from what the mainstream corporations have subjected us to for so many years now. It would be so awesome if you would like this video and subscribe to the channel if you liked this conversation. And never forget to join us, like I said, on Friday nights. And until next time, cheers, everybody.